Today we're talking about what to look for in international medical insurance. We've been traveling full time since 2019 and we have done a lot of research to figure out the medical coverage that's right for us. Stay with us all the way to the end to find out our number one tip for getting the right insurance plan for you. To our subscribers, welcome back. Thanks for joining us for another episode. If you are new around here, I'm Stephanie. And I'm Jillian. We're a couple who sold everything we own and headed off for a life of full-time travel. If you're looking for how-tos for slow travel, you've come to the right place. Don't forget to click that subscribe for a new video every Thursday. There is one question that we have received time and time again, and that is, what kind of insurance plan do we have? So this question usually comes up quite a bit after we release one of our cost of living videos. So these are the videos where we share all of the monthly costs from whatever destination we happen to be living in. And if you haven't seen those videos, we'll provide a link in the description below. If you watch those videos, you'll see that we've managed to keep our insurance costs down and yet we still have the insurance we need anywhere we are in the world. So today we're gonna to get into exactly what kind of insurance we have as full-time travelers with no permanent home anywhere in the world. We'll also share which insurance plan we started with and why we gave it up. Finally, we will go into all the details of our current policy. But before we get into it, a question for everyone who's watching. What kind of insurance do you use for covering your travel, whether it's for short-term trips or long-term travel, the way we do it. Let everyone know in the comments below. Before we started traveling full-time in 2019, we knew we needed a new type of insurance. We had been expats in Singapore for the last six years and had insurance through our workplaces for care we needed in Singapore. We would also buy travel insurance for any short trips we might be taking at that time. And of course, because we had left Canada so long ago, we had absolutely no coverage in our home country. We started our search in the usual way by evaluating all the providers we could find in the market who offered global coverage. Fortunately, we didn't have any pre-existing conditions which made the search more straightforward. Now, it can be a little complicated to do all of the research yourself, so you can consider getting a broker who will help you navigate the options. And the good news is that this won't come at any additional cost to you. We initially decided to go with Safety Wing, which offers a combined travel and medical insurance policy. This came in at a fairly low price of 97 US dollars every four weeks for the two of us. On the travel side, it covers things like lost luggage and travel delays, and on the medical side, it covers hospital and urgent care. Now, we had always planned to reevaluate our use of this insurance after the first year because it would be Jillian's 40th birthday and her premiums would be going up by 60%. However, just six months into our long term travels, COVID hit and we found ourselves stuck in a somewhat isolated area in northern Italy. And you can check out the whole story in the link below. At that time, we found out there was basically no coverage for a COVID-related illness from our safety wing plan, as it's not really intended to be comprehensive long-term health insurance. Safety wing was also specifically designed for travelers, so we wouldn't have any coverage after we had spent about one month in our home country, where as we said, we didn't have any health coverage at all. So with all of that in mind, we realized it was definitely time to reevaluate our health insurance. We looked at all the insurance providers on our list and ultimately decided on a plan from Cigna Global called the Silver International Health Insurance Plan. <laughs> now this is a true health insurance plan, not travel insurance. And there are many companies offering this type of plan. So we will give some examples of other companies later on. We weren't really concerned that our new plan didn't include any travel insurance because we actually have this coverage through our credit cards. So now we're going to get into all the details of our plan, including what it covers and how much it costs. In terms of geographic coverage, this plan covers us wherever we are in the world, excluding the United States. And we don't have any plans to get there in the next year, so that was not an issue for us. However, by reading the fine print in the policy document, we found out that we do have some coverage in the US. So we are covered for trips of up to three weeks long, as long as the total in the year is less than 60 days. Let's talk about what's included. Our plan is fairly basic, covering hospital stays and treatments up to 1 million US dollars, which is actually four times the coverage we had with Safety Wing. 
It also covers cancer treatments, which was a notable gap in our safety wing policy. To Safety Wing's credit, its plans are designed for travelers who have a home country that they can go back to. So if there are any long-term treatments that are required, the Safety Wing policy is intended to funnel people back to get their long-term health care at home. This is similar to other travel insurance plans like World Nomads, which is another provider that's quite popular among long-term travelers. So we've now talked about what our plan included. Let's talk about what it doesn't include because that's one of the reasons our premiums are so low. The insurance plan we chose had some optional add-ons for things like outpatient care, health screenings, vision, and dental. However, we decided not to add in any of these. We do value our health, of course, and we are very proactive with booking our preventative health screenings. However, when we looked at how much it would cost in addition on our premiums to get some of these add-ons, we decided it made more financial sense to pay for them out of pocket as and when they're needed. Instead, we have an annual budget set aside for our routine health care. And we talked more about this in a recent video, which was all about how to budget for a year of travel. And we'll link that video up in the description below. After being expats in Singapore, we became very comfortable with the idea of shopping around for our healthcare. So we have no issue with looking around to get low cost healthcare in countries where there is a very high standard of care. For example, we have both had dental treatments in Bangkok and additionally Jillian hopped the border from Singapore over to Malaysia to get a very inexpensive MRI. For this plan, our annual deductible is $2,500 US dollars per person. A key thing to note is that aside from the inclusions, the deductible can play a key role in the overall cost for a plan or the premiums. We had initially considered having a much higher deductible so that we could keep the cost of our premiums a lot lower, but in the end we decided that we would not be comfortable with paying such a high amount out of pocket and we're now in our comfort zone with a deductible at $2,500 US dollars. The next thing that we had to decide on was the copay, which is the percent that we'd have to pay above and beyond the deductible. We decided to go with a copay of zero dollars because we really felt that once we had paid up to the deductible, we wanted the rest to be fully covered by the insurer. So the total cost of our plan or the premiums were determined by the factors that we have just talked about. So the deductible, the copay, and also our age. In addition, it's also determined by our place of residency. Now, this is a very tough question for us because, of course, we don't have a home anywhere in the world. We were advised by Cigna to either choose the country we'd be in at the start of our plan or the country we would be spending the most time in. You should consider this choice carefully because the prices do vary quite a bit between each country. So the total price that we paid for the two of us for one year was $1,600 US dollars, which works out to be $133 a month. Now this includes a 10% discount because we prepaid for the full year. There are many other providers with similar plans to the one we chose from Cigna, and here are some of the examples from our research. After looking closely at all of these providers, there was one main reason that we chose Cigna, and that was the cost. We also like that they have a direct payment option within their network of providers. We also considered brand reputation and how well each company was reputed to handle claims. But to be honest, if you go onto the online forums, there are good and bad stories for every single company. So if you have feedback about any of the companies we've mentioned, good or bad, please share with everyone in the comments below. It would be really helpful to hear. Now we'll share our number one tip to get the insurance plan that's right for you. It is the most boring thing in the world, but we highly recommend reading through the entire policy document, every single detail. This might be an incredibly tedious thing to do, but you don't want to be caught off guard when you discover there's an exclusion that you weren't aware of. For example, you might find there are certain activities excluded like rock climbing or scuba diving or hiking above a certain altitude. On the flip side, you might have a pleasant surprise. For example, as we mentioned earlier, we were under the impression that our Cigna plan had zero coverage for spending time in the United States. But when we combed through the entire policy document, we discovered that there was in fact some limited coverage. If you found this video helpful, we recommend watching the next one right here. It's all about how to budget for a year of travel. You can go ahead and click on it now. And if you enjoyed this video, it would help us out if you hit that thumbs up 
And also don't forget to subscribe for a new video every week. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you back next time.